Hello and welcome to Polynomials 4.1, Determining the Remaining Zeros. Alright, today we are going to solve for x, basically, but it's not going to be as easy as solving for x when we just do quad formula, or solve for x when we do complete the square, or solve for x when we just factor. Um, we're going we're gonna to solve for x when they're polynomial functions, and because they're going to be polynomial functions, um, they're going to have more than just two answers. Yeah, and that's going to be the, the part that's going to add a little stress and add a lot more writing. But it's, it's a combination of a couple of lessons that we've been building up towards. So if you remember how to do those lessons, then you shouldn't have that big of a, a issue with this, this culmination or, or I guess cumulative lesson. But if you did forget how to do it, then yeah, you might stress out a little bit more. So just hang in there. Just, just watch the video as many times as you need and things will slowly get back into your brain. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we have basically on the first slide um, what is called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And it basically says uh, whatever your degree of your function is, that's how many answers or what they like to call zeros are going to be associated with it. So let's say if you have a degree of like 5, then when you solve for x, you're going to have 5 answers of x. Yeah, you might not have all 5 different numbers, but you're going to have 5 answers for x. Yeah, So some answers may repeat. Some answers are going to be different, but you're going to have five answers, okay? So if you had a, a degree of maybe like four, then you're going to have four answers for x, or four zeros, as some people like to call it, okay? And if you have, you get really crazy and you have like a degree of seven, then you can um, expect to see seven answers, yeah? But we're not going to go that crazy when we give you guys these problems. I think the biggest degree we give you is four. So at the most, you're going to have to find four answers, okay? So let's get started. And this is the step-by-step -step process that you're going to use to, to get your polynomial functions or equations solved. Um, you're going to see me talk about um, these steps in, in my own way as you watch the rest of the video. So I'm not going to really go over the steps, but it's here if you guys ever forget what the steps are. And you want to have something written that you can visually see as far as what steps you should be going in. Okay, this is going to be there for you to, to I guess, use as a resource. Okay, so let's get to our first problem. All right, so it says uh, we're going to solve for x to the third power plus 8x squared plus 14x plus 4. And first thing enough is they're going to say, okay, well, how many, what is the number of roots of this polynomial function, or of this polynomial, rather? Or you could also word it as how many zeros do we have, or how many answers of x are we going to have? So depending on who writes your question, they might, they might ask you this exact same question in a number of ways. And I just talked about it. I said, right? The way we put it in the question is state the number of roots of this polynomial. Other people might say, uh, um, how many zeros are you going to expect to find in this problem? Or how many answers of x are you going to expect to find in this problem? Okay. But basically, it all comes down to your degree. So since my degree is known as the biggest power, right, and my powers that I currently have are power of 3, power of 2, power of 1, power of 0. So since those are all my powers, my biggest power is 3. So I'm going to call that my degree, yeah? So let me just write inside degree equals 3. So you can see this visual um, connection between degree equaling 3 and the number of roots also being 3. And you can also make the connection that you're going to get 3 answers for x, okay? All right, so uh, they're nice. They, they gave us our first solution. Right? It says that x equals negative 2 is a solution. Um, not everybody is going to be nice, but when we introduce this topic to you, we're going to be nice. We're going to give you the first of the three answers or the three roots. Yeah, If, if you want to word it in the way that this, this question is saying it in that sentence. Um, yeah, basically you have your first answer. So please don't forget to write this first answer on this answer block because a lot of kids, yeah, when they start doing this problem, they forget that the first answer was given to them, and they forget to include it on this line. And when I look for three answers, and I don't see the one that was given in the problem, then I mark you wrong. So please don't forget to write this first given solution on the answer line as well, because it is one of the three solutions we're going to find in this problem. Okay? All right, so our first answer is negative 2. And we're going to use that, and we're going to bring back this technique called synthetic division, which you just saw in a previous lesson a couple of lessons ago. And we're going to break down this, this 
degree of 3 into a degree of 2. And, and well, I'll, I'll explain why that's important later on, but basically we're going we're gonna to divide. Yeah, we're going to divide this, this polynomial function by the, by the x equals negative 2 given solution, and it's going to break down the equation so that it'll be easier to work with. Okay, so we're going to set this synthetic division up, and we're going to put negative 2 in the backwards down. And we're going to write the coefficients of each of our terms, and we're going to make sure that if we have any missing terms, we're going to put a 0 in that spot. Okay, so we've got a 1, we've got an 8, we've got a 14, and we've got a 4. So nothing was missing. Okay, draw our long line. And since it told us that this is a solution, then guarantee this is going to be a zero because it told us this is a solution. So that's what you can depend upon, that this last guy is going to be zero. Okay, so let's do our synthetic division. You're going to add top and bottom, so that's going to make a one. You're going to go this number one that we just got on the bottom of the line, multiply to your number in the backwards out, and that gets you negative two. Okay, so if I fly through this thing called synthetic division, just go just go back and rewatch the lesson called synthetic division, and you can get the more in-depth explanation. Okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that you guys kind of remember how to do it, and I'm gonna kind of fly through it. I'm not gonna like um take my time on it. Okay, so subtract top and bottom, we get six. Then multiply to the number in the backwards L, we get negative twelve. Add top and bottom, we get two times by your number in the backwards L, we get negative 4, and we did get our 0. And we shouldn't be surprised because this is actually a solution of the problem, so we're supposed to get 0. Okay? So let's put back the x's that we took away. So first off, everybody gets an x, and then we're going to give back the power. So start on the right side, and put power of 0, then put power of 1, then power of 2. Okay? So here's why doing synthetic division as our first step is super important because now the equation that I have to work with is much more manageable. It's x squared plus 6x plus 2. And this is what you call a quadratic. And we just spent pretty much a whole semester learning how to or reviewing how to solve quadratics. So our problem no longer is a polynomial. It's not degree 3 anymore. Yeah. So the, the first answer they gave us, which is negative 2, allowed us to break down the, the polynomial function into a quadratic. And now we can use one of three techniques to continue this process called solving for x. So we can either complete the square, we can factor if possible, or we can um, quad formula. Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you guys which technique you should be using. You can use any of them that works. Yeah, uh, the only thing is factoring might not work on every single problem. Like this one, factoring is not gonna work because there's no two numbers that make two when I multiply and six when I add. So you actually can't factor it. So you're limited to either doing um, complete the square or quad formula. Okay, and since the problem doesn't really tell you what you want to use, you can pick whichever one of the two techniques you want. You can do quad formula or complete the square. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so. That's step one of the problem. Yeah, turn it into a quadratic. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my quadratic, which is x squared plus six x plus two equals zero, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually use um, complete the square. So let's subtract two on both sides because that's not the number the number I want in that spot, and I get x squared plus six x. And equals negative 2. So what number do I want in that spot? Well, let's do a little test and let's see where do I have space to run this test. Well, I'm going to grab my middle term which is 6. I'm going to cut it in half to make 3. I'm going to square it to make 9. So 9 should be the number that goes in that spot and unfortunately it is now blank which is actually good too because now I can put that 9 in that spot. So I'm going to put a plus 9 in that spot and don't forget add the 9 to both sides. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to factor the left side. So what two numbers make 9 when I multiply and 6 when I add? And that's going to be x plus 3. So I got x plus 3 two times because 3 times 3 makes 9 and 3 plus 3 makes 6. And on the right side, I got 7. Okay, then I'm going to turn these x plus 3s into a single x plus 3 that's squared and it equals 7. Okay, 
And if you guys remember what I usually told you guys to do, those, let's not leave it in um, this form. Let's turn it into vertex form. So uh, let's let's subtract that seven on both sides. I mean, you don't have to do this. I mean, it's it's kind of good to get into this habit, but yeah, it's not it's not a game changer. It's not going to make your answer all of a sudden wrong. Yeah, but if you really want to do this thing called complete the square the correct way, you probably want to get it into this type of form. Okay, so. All right, and this is the end of that step. Okay, so now our last process is gonna be solve for this equation that I just created. And I'm gonna write x plus three quantity squared minus seven equals zero. And here's where I tell you guys all the time, right? You guys are gonna hate me for this. You guys are gonna see that seven go right back on the other side. And you're gonna always tell me oh, that, that is that it, that doesn't make sense. You literally just put it on the left side, and now you're going to put it back on the right side? Yeah, like I said, because that signals the end of complete the square. I told you guys this many, many times already. Okay, so I got x plus 3 quantity squared equals 7. Okay, to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides. And don't forget, when you square root both sides, you got to put plus or minus. Don't forget that plus or minus. A lot of people forget about that. Okay, so left side, you get x plus 3 equals plus or minus and can square root 7 be broken up and circled and, and numbers go outside i don't think so because 7 is prime so nothing's going to break up so nothing's going to get circled either all right so our last step is to just get rid of that positive 3 so minus 3 on both sides and i get x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root 7 and there's your answer. Ooh, let me actually write it in this line too. So I'm going to go comma, and I'm going to go negative 3 plus or minus square root 7. So there's my three total answers. So negative 2 is my first answer. Negative 3 plus square root 7 is my second answer. Negative 3 minus square root 7 is my third answer. So I got three answers on that line. So my stated number of roots for this polynomial is three and it matches the number of answers i have given for this problem so i'm good to go okay all right so let's move on to number two okay so we have ooh, we have a fourth degree problem so my biggest my biggest power is four so that's going to mean that i have degree four and that may come as bad news to some of you because you're going to say wow that means i have to find four answers but luckily, this problem gave us the first two answers. And normally, normally in normal problems, you're not gonna get no. The, your your teachers are not gonna give you guys the first the, the answers numbers that work. They're not gonna do that. The only reason why we're doing it is so that we can make this this easier for you when you're first learning how to do this thing called solving polynomial functions using this technique. Yeah. So normally, when when you get real complex, you don't know what numbers are actually gonna work. And you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to guess and check numbers at random to see which ones work. And when you find the numbers that work, then you can use them. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, normally you're not gonna be given any solutions, any numbers that work at all. So consider yourselves a little lucky because our focus is just to get you guys, I guess, familiar with the process. And eventually we're gonna we're gonna take away the training wheels and we're gonna make you guys try stuff on your own. But that's gonna happen on a later day, or maybe not even in this class. We'll see. We'll see okay so um, since we have two answers it doesn't matter what order you go in you can do negative 5 with synthetic division first or you can do 3 with synthetic division first it doesn't matter okay so I'm just gonna go and do negative 5 first because that's the first answer they gave us so put negative 5 in the backwards now then write my coefficients is anybody missing no good nobody's missing so I don't gotta remember to put in zeros so 11, negative 36, negative 77, and 15. Okay, and I just got to remember, yeah, since this is a solution, guarantee this is going to be a zero. If I don't get a zero at the end, I made a mistake. Okay, so at top and bottom, I get 3 times 2 year backwards L, I get negative 15. At top and bottom, I get negative 4 multiplied to your backwards L, I get 20. At top and bottom, I get negative 16. Multiply to your backwards L, you get ooh, you get 80. At top and bottom, you get 3. 
times the year backwards, oh, you get negative 15. And that actually did give me zero. So I must be on the right track. Like I said, if you don't get zero, then you messed up. Okay? All right, so let's go and put our x's and our powers next to each of these numbers. So I give everybody an x first. And then I start going and giving my powers starting at zero and working my way up. Okay, so last problem, when I did this first round of synthetic division, I had a quadratic. So that's why I proceeded to step two, which was using um, complete the square or quad formula. Okay, but when I did round one of synthetic division, I'm not at a quadratic. I'm still at a polynomial function. So that's where your second answer comes in. Yeah, they gave us negative five. I used it. It broke my degree four into degree three. Oh, I forgot to write degree four. Sorry about that. Okay, so it broke my degree four into a degree three problem. So good job, negative five. You hooked me up. You helped me out a lot. Okay, so now we're going to tell the second number that they gave us, which is three, to take us one more round. Okay, and by doing this one more time, it's going to break this degree two, I'm sorry, degree three problem or function into a degree two. Okay, so here's where a lot of kids make a mistake. Yeah. When they start setting up their second round of synthetic division, they go back and they use the original numbers, 3, 11, negative 36, negative 77, negative, I'm sorry, positive 15. They use the original problem. But if you do that, you're going to turn that degree 4 into a degree 3, and you haven't done anything because, like I said, to do doing synthetic division, the goal is to turn it into a quadratic, which is degree 2. And the only way that's going to happen is if you take the equation, take the function that we just got, the 3x squared, uh, third, to the third power, minus 4x squared, minus 16x plus 3. We take that equation and we continue from there with synthetic division. So watch what I do for my coefficients. Right? Uh, you see me using the, the numbers that I just literally got from doing synthetic division for negative 5. Okay, I'm not using my original problem. That's where kids get messed up all the time. They think they have to use the original problem on round two. No, you don't do that. You're going to defeat the whole purpose if you do that because you're not going to get to a quadratic. Okay? So use the brand new coefficients that we just got. And you're going to do synthetic division round two. So at top and bottom, I get three. Multiply to your backwards L, you get nine. At top and bottom, you get five. Multiply to your backwards L, you get 15. At top and bottom, you get negative one. Multiply to the backwards L, you get negative three which makes my zero, so I know it's good to go, okay? Then let's give everybody back their x's, so everybody gets the x's, and now everybody gets power, so zero, one, two. And now you see a degree two, so you know you're on the right track, so three x squared plus five x minus one equals zero. So synthetic division, good job, you did your part, so you got to remember, the role of synthetic division in this problem is to turn your polynomial function of whatever high degree it is into a quadratic degree two. That's his goal. That's his mission. Okay. You got to make sure you understand the purpose of doing a process. And the process we just did was synthetic division. And his goal was to turn it into a quadratic. And once you see your quadratic, mission accomplished, you can move on. Okay. So, I don't think I'm going to factor this because I don't think it can because that's going to involve guess and check and I don't think it's going to work. I'm not going to also do complete the square because I have that 3 in the very, very front and I have a 5 in the middle. That's, a, that's an odd number. So cutting it in half and squaring it, that's not going to be pretty either. Yeah. So good thing we have options for quadratics. So we're going to do quad formula. Okay. And that's the beauty of quadratics. You have multiple techniques to get your answers. You're not just stuck with one technique right so let's let's do this so a is three let me change the color so a is three b is five and c is negative one so let's plug into quad formula so x equals negative from the formula and b which is five over two a so two times three plus or minus square root so b squared so that's going to be five times five minus 4ac, so minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a, so 2 times 3. 
All right, so let's see what we get. So let's play with some numbers. So x equals, we got negative on the side. We got 5 over 6 as our first fraction, plus or minus square root. And let's play with these numbers. 5 and 5 is 25. Negative 4, 3, negative 1, that's going to be a positive 12. And on the bottom, we get a 6. Okay, let's play some more with the numbers. So this first fraction, can I simplify it? No, that's, that's good to go. He's done. Negative 5 over 6, he's finished. Plus or minus, square root 37 over 6. And can 37 be broken up by factor tree with numbers that can be circled? No, I don't think so. Yeah, because 37 is a prime number. So, uh, yeah, actually, ooh, we're done. Okay, so make sure on the very, very first step, one of the first things you do is make sure you add the, the numbers, the solutions they gave you to your answer line because those are your first two answers. And you're going to go comma, negative 5, 6, plus or minus, square root 37 over 6. Okay, and don't forget, yeah, like I said, I, I'm going to say this super plenty of times okay the answers they give you put it on the answer line because you need to physically be able to count four answers so negative five that's my first answer three that's my second answer negative five six plus square root 37 over six that's my third answer negative five over six minus square root 37 over six that's my fourth answer okay so make sure that's why we put this 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 first blank here with a four there because it's going to remind you that i better have four answers on this line a lot of kids they forget that and when i mark them off with points they, they get all sick because they knew that i reminded them a couple hundred times they're like yep I, I remember you saying it like 50 times at least and i forgot when i counted the most okay all right next problem <laughs> number three Oh, okay, so this is a different problem. This is, a uh, looks, it looks kind of unintimidating because it looks so tiny. But the thing about math is, yeah, the, the easier a problem looks, like the simpler it looks, that's probably like a, a, a little trick. Yeah, like a little um, trick that says, yeah, it looks too easy, so it looks maybe deceiving. Okay. And this is one of those problems. It doesn't really, it's not really as easy as it seems. Okay. So, all right. So our degree is three. So let me put a three there. They gave us our first answer. So I'll put a three there also. And let's go with the synthetic division. And there's a couple of powers missing. So I got to put zeros. Okay. So I got a one for my first term. X squared is missing. So I put a zero. X is missing. So I put a zero. And then negative 27. Okay, so like I said, these, these problems here, they're going to be tricky because they are missing things. Yeah, and it may look easy, but it's going to require you guys to remember a lot of stuff. So don't forget. Okay, and I put that zero at the end because, like I said, right, this is an answer. Three is actually an answer that's a part of the problem. So it should be working. Okay, so let's synthetic divide. So add them up, you get one. Multiply, you get three. Add, you get three. Multiply, you get nine. Add, you get 9, multiply, you get 27, and negative 27, positive 27, they cancel out. It gets me my 0. So far, so good. I'm on the right track. So let's put my x's. Let's put my powers. And did my synthetic division give me a quadratic? Yes, it did. I got my x squared, right? That's the whole purpose. You want to get your quadratic. Okay, so I got my quadratic. Uh, I don't think there's two numbers that make 9 when I multiply and 3 when I add, so I can't factor it. Uh, I don't think I want to do complete the square because and that's going to require me to divide 3 by 2 and get a, get a, get a crazy fraction. And I don't, I don't want to square that crazy fraction either, so I'm not going to complete the square either. So let's just go with quad formula. So I got x squared plus 3x plus 9. And let's go with uh, quad formula. So my a value is 1. My B value is 3, my C value is 9, when I forgot to write equals 0. Okay, so let's plug it in. So X equals negative uh, B, which is 3, over 2 A, so 2 times 1, plus or minus, square root, and I get 3 times 3, minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 9. 
all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Okay, so let's play with some numbers. I get negative 3 over 2, plus or minus. Play with the other numbers in the second fraction. So that's what is that? 9 minus 36 over 2. Okay, and I get x equals negative 3 over 2, plus or minus square root negative 27 over 2. And ooh, this time I can break up negative 27 using factor tree. Okay, so hopefully you're at the stage in your math journey in this class where you can actually kind of do the easier factor trees in your head. Okay, and I'm not saying negative 27 is super easy, but you've seen that number enough where you can hopefully break it apart in your head on your own. And if you can't, just keep trying. It'll, it'll get easier. And if you can, cool, you've made progress. Okay, so your negative sign is your ii, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. And, and what really helps my students um, be able to do factor tree in your head is if you really, really don't use a calculator for the simple, simpler um, arithmetic that, that the problems come up. Yeah, and if you guys have been using your calculator, shame on you. That's why you're, you're probably having a little bit harder time factor treeing in your head. But up to you. I mean, everybody is, is going to make your own decisions, so... Just make the ones that are in your best interest. And like I said, yeah, if, if you have trouble with the factor tree in your head, uh, maybe you might want to try to do more mental math. Yeah. Okay, so I circle the things that match. So there's two i's. There's three threes, but I only circle things that match, like pairs. So I circle two threes. And the other guy gets left out. Poor thing. Okay. So let's see what this becomes. Oh, yeah, back on blue. So x equals negative 3 over 2 plus or minus. And 3i goes on the outside. Three, one of the three stays on the inside. And 2 on the bottom. And all my, my fractions are all simplified, so I don't got to worry about that. So I'm going to go comma. And I'm going to add my second and third answer to this line. So negative 3 over 2 plus or minus 3i square root 3 over 2. And there you go. Okay, so... Uh, this section, unfortunately, has a second type of problem, which is going to be your last factoring technique you're going to learn for the school year. Yeah, and it's called sum and difference of cubes. Okay, so there's, there's a couple of ways that you guys can do this to make it easier for yourself. Some kids, they just memorize this formula. And based on the formula you memorize, you're going to put whatever numbers in that spot for A, you're going to put it where you ever see an A. Then they're going to put whatever numbers in that spot called B. They're going to put it in wherever they see a B. Yeah, so it's pretty much just like plug and play. Yeah, so it's kind of almost like um, quad formula where if it says put A, B, and C in those spots, you're going to put A, B, and C in those spots, and you're going to multiply and subtract and do all that kind of stuff. So some students, they like that technique. They memorize the, the, the framework of difference in sum of cubes, and they just plug in the numbers where it goes. But if you're not that good at memorizing, which kind of like what I am, I'm not that good at memorizing a lot of things unless I do it, do something like a couple of hundred times, then I can remember it pretty easily. But if you're not that good at memorizing, then uh, you might want to just do this problem based on this story, yeah, that I'm going to frame out. That's going to help you remember what to do step by step. And it's kind of unorthodox as far as how this story connects to the math, but it's the, it's the best thing I could think of that would hopefully make a story that connects to the process that makes it easier to remember what to do first, what to do second, what to do third. Okay, so let's go with our first problem. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to, if you want to relate it to my story, you're going to treat this like cooking, like creating a dish, cooking something at, at home. Yeah, and the first thing you want to do is you want to gather your ingredients and you want to chop it into pieces. Okay, so I got my, I got my ingredients, I got x to the third and I got 125. And I want to chop it up into the ingredients so that I can I can put them in the pot, right? Because if you get a potato, you don't just want to stick the whole potato in the pot as is. You want to chop the little potato into smaller pieces, and yeah, not just have one potato floating in your in your stew, right? You have that that wouldn't make sense. So you're gonna you're gonna want to prep the ingredients by cutting it into smaller pieces. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rewrite x to the third and 125 as cubes. Well. You're going to say uh, x is already as cubed, so that's not going to be a big deal. But 125 is definitely not written as a cube. Okay? 
So when I rewrite x to the third plus 125, I'm going to rewrite it as x to the third plus 5 to the third. So here's where you're going to get irritated. You're going to have to memorize or get to know what are your perfect cubes. And you're going to say, oh, are, are they just like perfect squares? Where 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. Yeah, perfect cubes are the same thing as perfect squares, except you're going to multiply the number 3 times. So, for example, 1 times 1 times 1, that's 1. 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27. 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. 5 times 5 times 5, that's 125. And you can notice, whoa, the numbers are getting pretty big, pretty fast. Okay? So, hopefully, uh, when I make the problems in your quiz and your test, I don't get too crazy and, and give you like 11 times 11 times 11. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I think the biggest I go is, uh, I think, 7 times 7 times 7, which is 343. Yeah, I think that's the biggest I go. I don't think I go 8 times 8 times 8. All right, so first step, right, we, we chop the, the ingredients into smaller pieces or cubes. So x to the third plus 5 to the third, right? So that's the first step, chop it into cubes, okay? Then you want to get your pots ready. So you're going to have a small pot first, and then you're going to have a big pot next. So you can see the size difference, right? Small pot and big pot. And in the small pot, you're going to put one of each ingredient. Wait, right. I thought that was an H. Why is my pen not writing nicely? Okay, and this, in the bigger part, you're going to put two of each ingredient. And let's see if it writes nicer this time. Ooh, no, it's not. Okay, two of each ingredient. All right, so let's do this. So you're going to put one of each. So I put an X and I put a five. Right, because you chopped it into cubes. Right, so you have three X's and three fives, basically. So I write, I put one of each ingredient in the first pot. Then I'm going to put two of each ingredient in the second pot. So x, x, and five, five. And in the middle, I'm going to, I'm going to mix them up, right? I'm going to grab my two ingredients, which is an x and a five, and I'm going to smash them together, and I'm going to make five x. Okay? So in the small pot, I put one of each ingredient, so a single x, a single five. In the second pot, the bigger one, I put two of each ingredient, so x, x, and five, five. And for my and for my middle, because I left the big space in the middle, I'm going to grab the two ingredients, five and x, I'm going to smash them together and make five x. Okay? And then I'm going to let it cook. Right? I'm going to let the pots do a thing. I'm going to let it boil. I'm going to I'm gonna let it simmer, right? And in the meantime, I, I have some dirty dishes, so I'm going to wash my dishes with soap. Okay, because right when you're in the kitchen, uh, you don't want to save all your dishes for the end. I mean, you can, but then the dishes are going to be really, really, uh, they're going to pile up. So you don't want to do that. So while we're waiting for the stew to boil, we're going to wash the dishes that we use so far with soap. And the reason why I wrote out soap is because they actually spell out what is called an acronym. And this acronym is going to tell us what signs we're going to put in these three blank spots. Right, there's a sign that's going to go right here, there's going to be a sign that goes right here, and there's going to be a sign that goes right there. And the acronym SOAP is going to tell you what signs go in each of these three blanks. So S stands for same. O stands for opposite. And AP stands for always positive. Okay, so... That tells us, like I said, it tells us the three signs that are going to go into three blanks. So, first sign is going to be the same. It says same for my first sign. So, same as my original problem. So, my original problem is plus. So, I put a plus sign there. My second sign says put the opposite. So, if my first sign was positive, my second sign is negative. And my last sign is going to be always positive. So, I put a plus sign there. Okay. So now I got my signs. I, I washed my dishes with my soaps. So that helped me put my signs in these three blank spots. So let's make this dish look presentable. And let's start combining my X and X and my 5 and 5. And let's make this dish look presentable. And let's get this thing done. So first parentheses, X plus 5. Nothing to simplify there. Second parentheses, X and X makes X squared. Then minus 5X 
plus 25. And there you go. There's your answer. Wasn't that easy? Okay, all right, let's go on to our next problem. Okay, so we're gonna do our first step. We're gonna break everything up into cubes. So we're gonna break the eight into cubes. We're gonna break the 27 into cubes. We're not gonna break the x into cubes because it's already as a cube. Okay, so eight as a cube is two to the third power. X cubed is already as a is already a cube, so I'm not gonna do anything to him. Minus three cubed. Okay, but unfortunately, this dish calls for only two ingredients, and I currently have three. I got a two, I got an X, and I got a three. That's too many ingredients. So here's what I gotta do. I gotta I gotta combine two ingredients together to form just one. So I'm gonna grab my two to the third and my x to the third, and I'm gonna combine them together and make two x to the third power. And they're gonna just become one ingredient, okay? So don't forget to do that because if you don't do that, when you make the big pot and small pot, you're gonna get confused because you're gonna be like, ooh, I have three ingredients. I got a two, I got an x, I got a three. Where do they all go, yeah? So make sure you combine two and x in the same ingredient. All right, so let's make my small pot. Let's make my big pot. So one of each ingredient in the small pot, so two X and three. Two of each ingredient in my big pot, so two X, two X, three, three. And then combine the two ingredients together for the middle. So two X and three make six X, <laughs> okay? All right, now let's start cleaning the dishes with soap. So S stands for same. So same sign is my original problem, so that's minus. O stands for opposite, so opposite my first sign, which is positive. And last sign, always positive, so put a plus sign. Okay, so let's clean this up. Let's make this dish look presentable. So 2x minus 3, that stays the same. 2x, 2x, that makes 4x squared, plus 6x, plus 9. And there you go. All done. Okay. Let's see. Is there another problem or is this the end? That's the end. The rest is homework. Okay. So I hope you guys understood the, the two different types of problems that we did today. They were kind of very different from each other. So hopefully you still can catch on to everything that, that I just talked about. And like anything else, this is a video. So if you have any, any things that you, you missed, just rewind and watch it as many times as you need. But good luck and I will see you later. Bye-bye.